OpenAI's spring announcement introduced GPT-40, a revolutionary multimodal flagship model and its desktop app for Mac. The O stands for Omnimodal, which represents its multimodal capability to reason across voice, vision, and text in real time. Chat GPT-4, O will be available to both free and paid users, with paid users enjoying higher limits and access to voice chat. Notably, free users will now have access to features previously exclusive to paid users, including vision capabilities, memory function, data analytics, web browsing, the GPT store, and custom GPTs. Currently, Chat GPT 4.0 is available to select users through the API and is being gradually rolled out on the Chat GPT website. OpenAI's demos highlighted the voice feature and human-like conversations with the GPT, but a notable introduction on their website was the prompting examples under exploration of capabilities. One example that caught my attention showcased creating consistent characters through interactions with the GPT. In this example, an image of a male lady named Sally was generated, and subsequent generations referred to her by name, producing consistent results. We're going to try to replicate this example. We're now on the ChatGPT website, which has a new URL, chatgpt.com, previously chat.openeye.com. If GPT-4 has been rolled out to your account, you'll see it in the model selection dropdown. As a paid subscriber, I'm unsure if the new GPT is available to free accounts yet, but OpenAI promises it will be available to free users starting May 19th. In OpenAI's announcement, there was no mention of DALE 3 being freely available to all users, so I turned to ChatGPT for clarification. Unfortunately, the response indicated that DALE 3 will only be accessible to paid users for the time being. As it stands, a paid subscription is required to generate images in ChatGPT, including custom GPTs for DALA 3. If you have a free account and have access to DALA 3, please let us know in the comments. So now let's copy the prompt from the first example. It says that these are standalone conversations, so let's download the image and start a new chat. I'm going to upload the image and enter the input from the example. As you can see, the memory feature has been updated. This feature allows users to teach ChatGPT to remember details and preferences from their conversations. Previously exclusive to paid users, it's now available for free. You can manage the memory by clicking here, where you can delete individual data or clear the entire memory. The image description has been saved as shown. I'll copy and paste the prompt for the next image hoping Sally's appearance will match the reference image. Well, I don't know who this is, but it's not Sally. Maybe the next prompt will succeed. Her outfit is more consistent and she's indeed a woman. However, generating more images using the example prompts yields inconsistent results. Honestly, I doubted that simply using a name in the prompts would produce consistent characters, and it seems I was right. In the past, you needed to reference the seed number or generation ID of the desired image and include it in the prompts to achieve consistency. If you have any insights into what went wrong, please share your thoughts in the comments. When creating consistent characters in DAL-E, three methods are commonly employed. Reference the seed number, which is a unique code that initializes image generation ensuring reproducibility and variations. Using the same seed number will generate the same image or its variations. Reference the generation ID, which is a unique identifier assigned to each generated image, distinguishing it from others, even if generated using the same seed number. Useful for referencing specific images and tracking changes, and prompt refinement through feedback looping, a process where user feedback is used to refine the prompt, achieving consistency through iterative adjustments. This method can be combined with either the seed number or generation ID. We will test all three approaches to determine their effectiveness. Before we begin, 
I'll seek guidance on creating consistent characters. According to the GPT, providing details like name, age, etc. is best for maintaining consistency across image generations. Next, I'll ask the GPT to create a character description of a young boy, which will serve as the basis for generating images with a consistent appearance. With this information, I'll create a prompt for DAL E3, modify it if necessary, and start generating images. This first image is a good match for the description, so I'll use it as a reference for the remaining images. I'll also retrieve the seed number and use it in every prompt. Let's experiment with changing the boy's facial expressions. First, I'll generate an image of the boy looking afraid, using the same seed number to maintain consistency. The result looks similar, except for the eye shape, which is likely influenced by the afraid expression. Next, I'll request a happy expression. However, the boy's appearance is drifting away from the reference image, particularly his eyes. It seems like the generator is carrying over the eye shape from the previous image. To address this, I'll inform the GPT that the boy looks different from the original image. Despite its efforts to match the reference, the results aren't consistent. Perhaps our description needs more specificity. Let's ask it to describe the first image in detail, focusing on the boy's appearance. Then, I'll ask it to remember the description and it will be saved to memory. With this refined description, let's try generating a happy image of the boy again. This time, the result looks more consistent with the original image. I'll continue requesting images with different expressions and scenes, providing feedback whenever the results are inconsistent, and sometimes the prompt was automatically updated. For instance, when I asked for an image of the boy laughing, the initial result had him looking different with his hair parted on the wrong side. I informed the GPT of the issue, and after a few more generations, I finally got a consistent image of the boy laughing. Sometimes it will repeat the same inconsistent image, but occasionally, instructing it to modify the prompt resolves the issue. My next attempt was to have the boy hold a baseball bat, but it didn't work out at first. I thought widening the image might help, but that didn't work either. Then I asked the model to zoom out and surprisingly, the baseball bat appeared, but the boy's appearance had changed. After providing feedback that the boy looked different, I eventually got a consistent image. I'm unsure if the image width or zoom out instructions made the difference or if simply re-rolling the prompt was the key. I also tested the model's ability to maintain consistency with the boy wearing different clothes. As you can see, the red shirt was changed to blue, and while the rest of his clothes remained the same, his face shape appeared wider. After a few generations, I got an image that was close but not quite satisfactory. So, I asked it to review our conversation so far and suggest additional details to include in the boy's description for a consistent appearance. ChatGPT generated an updated prompt, which I used to get a new image. While the boy looked like our character, he appeared a bit older. After re-rolling the prompt once more, I finally achieved a consistent look. However, I wanted him facing forward, so I provided further feedback on what was wrong with the image. After some persistence, I finally got a consistent image of the boy facing forward and wearing a blue shirt. Based on the generation so far, using the seed number has yielded good results, though not perfect. Next, I'll test the generation ID using the same prompt and following the same steps as before. Interestingly, I didn't notice a significant difference between the two methods. In both cases, I had to provide feedback to refine the prompt, and sometimes I received a good result on the first try, while other times I had to re-roll the generation multiple times. Now, I'll test the feedback loop method, which is essentially what I did previously, but without referencing a seed number or generation ID. However, achieving a consistent look for the character proved more challenging, even with feedback on what was wrong with the images. 
After numerous generations, only two images maintained a consistent appearance. I believe the seed number and generation ID methods combined with refining the prompt through feedback are the most effective of the three methods. However, I wonder if there's a more efficient approach. While not necessarily better, DAL E3's image editing tool is certainly helpful. To access it, simply click on the image you want to modify. Select this icon to make a selection. You can adjust the selector's size and click-drag the circle over the area you want to change. After making your selection, enter the prompt to modify the selected area. For instance, I'll type blue shirt. The boy looks identical but now wears a blue shirt. But what about changing facial expressions? Let's try a sad expression. I'll select his whole face as most of it would change to convey a sad expression like sad eyes and a frown. The prompt will be sad expression. Unfortunately, that didn't quite work. Maybe I need to refine the prompt. Let's start again, selecting the whole face. And this time, I'll use the original prompt that generated the image. I'll paste and modify it to get a sad expression. That didn't work either. Perhaps I'm selecting too much, so this time, I'll select only the mouth and use the prompt sad expression. Ah, that's what I wanted. Our boy with a sad expression, but otherwise identical. I'm curious about the prompt chat GPT used to generate this image. It's the same as the original prompt, except it changed bright red shirt to bright blue shirt and added details for a sad expression, including some I didn't specify, like slouching. It might have even incorporated parts of my previous prompt, like big frown and sad eyes. You can also use this tool without making a selection, as I did in this example. Remember earlier in this video, I attempted to create consistent images of a male lady following the prompts on OpenEye's website, but failed? This time, I'll try using the seed number to achieve consistency. I didn't refine the prompts, as I wanted to closely follow the example prompts on the website. Starting with the first prompt, I generated an image, then asked ChatGPT to describe the image, focusing on the woman's features. Next, I asked it to craft a prompt for DAL E3 based on this description, to generate more images of the male woman with a consistent appearance. I combined this prompt with a modified version of the next example prompt and added the instruction to use all the features of the woman from the image with the seed number. So, what do you think? Do you agree that these images look more consistent than my initial attempt? I'm pleased with the improvement and I think the seed number played a key role in achieving this consistency. After experimenting with various approaches, I've come to a key realization None of these methods are foolproof, and you should expect to refine prompts and re-roll generations. However, leveraging ChatGPT can significantly help. Ask it to describe your character and even generate a prompt based on an image. I noticed that in my last example, achieving a consistent look required fewer generations, possibly because I utilized ChatGPT's prompt earlier in the process. Notably, I didn't discover any new features in ChatGPT 4.0 that would make creating consistent characters easier. All the techniques I used in this video, such as image description, memory, seed numbers, generation IDs, and prompt refinement through natural language interactions were already available in previous models. This leaves me wondering how the OpenAI team managed to get consistent images of Sally using only the provided prompts. Have you cracked the code on creating consistent characters using some new approach introduced in GPT-4.0 or DALE-3? If so, we'd love to hear about your approach in the comments below. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.